Hi, this is Shekhar Srinivasan, a Microsoft Certified Trainer, Plural Site Author and CEO Techno Academy. In this video, we shall learn one of the new feature introduced in Xamarin Forms 4 that is Shell. We shall understand the advantage of developing an application using Shell with Demo. First, let us understand what is the advantage of using Shell in Xamarin Forms application. Xamarin Forms Shell reduces the complexity of mobile application development by providing the fundamental features that most mobile application requires. The main advantage of using Shell is, it allows us a single place to describe the visual hierarchy of an application. Shell helps in providing a common navigator user experience and also it provides a URI based navigation schema that permits navigation to any page in the application. Shell also provides an integrated search handler. Shell applications will also increase the rendering speed and it reduces the memory consumption. One important point we need to remember here is that Shell provides an opinionated navigation experience based on flyouts and taps. The top level of navigation in a Shell application is either a flyout or a bottom tab bar, depending on the navigation requirements of the application. So in this video, let us understand how to create the Xamarin Forms mobile application using shell with the navigation support of tabs and flyout. Let us start with our demo. I am going to use Visual Studio 2019 for Mac which will be supporting the Xamarin Forms 4.0. Make sure that you are using Xamarin Forms 4.x for this demo. Now let me create a blank application and let me provide the name for the application as Xamarin for Shell App Demo. And let me click on next and I would like to keep the same folder for maintaining the application. So once again let me click on create. These steps will create a blank Xamarin Forms application. Now our requirement is to understand how to use the new shell feature of Xamarin Forms while creating the mobile application. So let me open the main page.xaml file. And now let me update the value for the label and now let me add the title for the content page. Simplest shell application is a single page application. So let us first understand how to create a single page application. Then later in this video we shall learn how to use the tab and also flyouts. So let us get started with the single page application. Now let me add a new file. Since we don't have a shell item template, let me select the content page XAML itself. And let me provide the name for the file as main shell.xaml. Since we don't require the content page and we require a shell, let us update the content page to the cell. So let me update the code. I have changed the content page to shell within the code file. And now let us update the same at the XAML also. So let me remove the content page and update with shell. Since shell will not have the content page dot content, if that code is present within your file, we need to remove that. Now in order to use the shell for single page application, we need to type in shell item, shell content. And within the shell content, we need to specify the single content page to be used by the application. Since we need to refer the pages within the application, let me update the code at the shell. So let me type in XML namespace colon pages equal to CLR iPhone namespace colon our namespace name semicolon assembly equal to our assembly name. Since we are not maintaining any folder structures, both the namespace name and the assembly name are same here. Now within the shell content, 
let me specify the name of the content page to be used as the single page. So let me type in pages colon main page. Now in order to execute our application we need to update the main page property present within our application class. So let us open the app.xaml.cs file and let me comment the main page code and let me type in main page equal to new main shell. Now let us save the code and execute the program. We can observe our main page is displayed but if you observe carefully then you can notice that a flyer has been added implicitly. Since this application is a single page application we don't require any flyer for this page. So if we wanted to get rid of the flyer we need to update our shell. So let us update the code. So let me type in flyout behavior equal to disable. Now once again let me save the code and execute the program. We can observe our application is displayed and there is no flyer added to our application. Now let us understand how to use the shell and tabs for our application. So let me use the magic of the video and let me add two content pages for our application and also let me add two images as the resources for Android project. Now I have done that you can observe there are two new XAML files one is cabbooking.xaml and the other one is flightbooking.xaml. Let us open these two files to understand what is there in these files. First let me open the cabbooking.xaml file. We can observe it is just a simple content page with an image and a label stating welcome to cab booking along with the button continue. And now let me open the flight booking page. We can observe the same three controls where the label text is welcome to flight booking page. Where the label text is welcome to flight booking page. And let me expand the Android project also. You can observe I have copied two image files within the drawable folder of the resources. Now I wanted to use these two files as a tabbed pages with the support of shell. So let us understand how to achieve that. So first let me comment the previous lines of code and now let me type in tab bar. Here we need to define the tabs. To do that we need to type in tab. And in order to provide the tab header, we need to set the title. For example, cab booking. And in order to specify the tab icon, we need to set the icon property. So let me type in icon equal to car.png. Once we define the tab, now we need to specify whenever the user clicks on the tab, then what is the shell content it has to display. So let me type in shell content. And within that we need to specify the content page to be displayed. So let me type in pages colon cab booking. This code will create a single tab. Now let us define one more tab. So let me type in tab title equal to flight booking icon equal to booking.png shell content pages colon flight booking. Now let me save the code and execute the application. Now we can observe the tab objects are rendered as bottom tabs. Now one important point we need to remember here is that shell supports implicit conversion operators. It can be used to remove the shell content and the top objects. So let us understand how to do that. So let me comment the previous lines of code and let me type in. So let me type in tab bar pages colon cab booking icon image source equal to car.png pages colon flight booking icon image source equal to booking.png. Once again let me save the code and execute the program. We can observe there is no difference in the result. One important point we need to remember here is that implicit conversion automatically wraps each content page object in a shell content object which are then both wrapped in a tab object. One more important point we need to remember here is that within a shell application 
each content page that is a child of a shell content object is created during application startup. Adding additional shell content objects using the above approach will result in additional pages being created during application startup, which will lead to a poor startup experience. But remember that shell is also having a capability of creating pages on demand in response to navigation. So let us understand how to achieve that. Now once again let me comment the previous lines of code and let me copy our standard tab code and paste so that you have the reference of all the code. Now let me update the shell content first. Within the shell content let me type in content template equal to data template and we need to specify what is the content page. So let me type in pages colon cab booking. And now we don't need to define one more instance for the content page. So let me remove the pages colon cab booking. And similarly, let me update the code for the flight booking also. So let me type in content template equal to data template flight booking. And let me remove the instance of the flight booking page also. Now let us save the code and execute our application. We can observe the same result, but there will be some differences with respect to the startup load time of the application. Hope you have understood how to use the shell for creating the tabs. Now let us understand how to use the shell for working with the flyouts. Just to avoid confusions, let me create a new shell file. So let me add a new file and let me select the content page XAML and let me provide the name as flyout main shell dot XAML. Once again, let me update the code. So let me replace the content page with a cell. Let me do the same at the XAML file also. Let me remove the content page dot content. Now in order to use the flyouts, we need to set two things. One is the flyout headers and the other one is flyout items. So let me type in shell dot flyout header template. Then we need to define the data template. So let me type in data template and we can use any layout for designing the header template. To make the thing simple, let me use a grid. Let me set some background color, for example, black. And then let me set the height request as 200. Now I would like to display some image within the header. So let me type in image aspect equal to aspect fill and then source equal to let me paste some image URL source and then let me set the opacity as 0.6 for adding some small transparency effect. Now let me add a small header text. So let me type in label text equal to online booking app text color equal to purple. Let me set the font attributes as bold and then let me set the horizontal options as center and the vertical options as center. Defining the flyout items will be exactly same as that of defining the tabs. So let me open the main shell.xaml file and let me copy the code of defining the tabs. Now let me paste that code in our flyout main shell. And now only one thing we need to do is that replace the tab element as flyout item. So let me update the code. Now you can observe the code has been updated to support the flyout items. Since we are using the pages namespace, we need to define that within our shell. So let me type in XML namespace colon pages equal to CLR hyphen namespace colon our namespace name semicolon assembly equal to our assembly name. Now let me update the main page at the application class. So let me comment the previous line and then let me type in main page equal to new flyout main shell. Now let us save the code and execute the program. We can observe this time there is no tabs but instead we can observe the flyouts. Instead of using the flyout header template we can keep our code in a simple way by maintaining the code of data template separately within a content view and use that code for the flyout header. So let me add a new file. So this time let me select the content view XAML and let me provide the name as header view.xaml 
and now let me copy the code present within the data template of the flyout header template and now let me paste that code within the content view as its content. Let me save this file. Now let me once again open the shell file and let me comment the previous lines of code which is providing the flyout header. And now let me type in shell.flyout header pages colon header view. Let us save the file and let me execute the application. We can observe the same results has been displayed. But if you observe the code present within the shell file, it is more neat and clean. Hope you have understood how to use xamarin.forms shell to have the tabs and flyouts. In the upcoming videos, I will be explaining how to use the shell with the page configuration, navigation, search handlers and custom renderers. Hope you have enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed in preparing this video. If you like this video, please subscribe my channel and give a like. This encourages me to create more and more videos. See you in the next video.